Zach Wilson is back. The New York Jets are taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers on the road. Let's get into it. Hey, what's going on? I am Matt O'Leary back with another video. Today, we'll be breaking down the New York Jets versus Pittsburgh Steelers matchup. Before we get started today, just want to mention where you can follow on social media at Matt O'Leary and why last but certainly not least, you guys should know the drill by now, unless you're sleeping under a rock. New episodes of Just Jets drop every Wednesday. Thank you so much for checking it out. You can call in, leave me your reactions, and I will get to them on the show. And if you missed it, new show starts next week, Monday to Thursday. We are live streaming at 2 p.m every one of those days and we're calling that the jet report so the one and two jets travel to pittsburgh to take on the one and two steelers and it is a big deal because zach wilson is finally back thank you goodness gracious i am amped up to see the young quarterback back in action there's been debates whether it should be joe flacco starting or mike white starting or should they keep sitting out zach wilson it's all just baloney at this part a, a whole bunch of belugna but Let's get into the rundown. Where do these team ranks in total offense and defense right now? The New York Jets are 20th in offense, where the Steelers are 19th, according to Pro Football Reference. Uh, I don't know how the Steelers are necessarily 19th because they their offense has really struggled more on that in a little bit. Jets defense stinks, 26th. Steelers, 18th. So Steelers right around the middle of the pack, 19 and 18. Jets, 20 and 26. Can the Jets get the edge here? And speaking of getting the edge, we should talk about Mojo. If you haven't checked it out yet, you should. They just recently launched in New, Jer New Jersey. Uh, coming soon to a place near you. I absolutely love this app. I'm obsessed with it as I continue to check the stock prices. I want to highlight three guys. Two Jets, one Steeler, and where they're going. Zach Wilson, obviously, is someone that I want to highlight. His stock price is up at $32.56, which is up. 0.11%. He is getting the start. So this is the time to invest in him now before he continues to play. And before that stock price rises, as you look around other quarterbacks who are young and developing and their stock prices have exponentially increased. Now's the time to get in on a guy like that. Garrett Wilson is also someone who continues to skyrocket. He is up over $15 now, 15.24, up 11.4%. And Najee Harris came down slightly. That's the player that I want to target on the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's at $13, uh, excuse me, 13.72. Yep. And down 0.12%. Uh, but that's the player that I would be looking at on the Steelers. I'm not, not interested in investing in, in, in Mitchell Trubisky. Kenny Pickett, I guess maybe now you could do make make your investment in, in Kenny, but uh, Najee Harris is the young guy that they like to run a lot, so maybe keep an eye on him. Let's get into the preview. The Pittsburgh Steelers offense does nothing to impress me. Not a damn thing. Through their first three games, they've scored 23, 14, and 17 points. They've been under 20 points in two of their three games, and they needed overtime to get to 23. Now I know the Jets offense with Joe Flacco was not necessarily something to write home about as they struggled in week one and week three, week two, obviously exploded for 31 points, but this, uh, this Steelers offense is really struggling to put up points. And the main reason behind that is they continue to start Mitch Trubisky, who is going to be starting for Pittsburgh this week. They're refusing to play Kenny Pickett. And so far on the year, Trubisky has just two, two passing touchdowns. 189.7 yards per game and a 77 rating. He's not a good quarterback. I understand that they brought him in. They wanted him to be a bridge, but how much longer is this bridge going to go on? How much longer are they going to do this? It almost reminds me of when the Jets played the Cleveland Browns in week two of 2018 and the Browns are starting Tyrod Taylor. And for whatever reason, they decide, uh, okay, we're not actually going to, or was it week three? Sorry, it might've been week three. I, I apologize. It was week three. Uh, and they decide that they're going to start uh, Tyrod Taylor. And then he gets hurt. And then Baker Mayfield comes in. Uh, and the Jets were not prepared for Baker Mayfield. So hopefully Robert Sal is a little bit smarter than Todd Bowles. It's not a high bar to clear, um, but just hopefully a little bit smarter there. Um, and, and they're, they're semi-prepared for Kenny Pickett, but... More of the story, they're riding with uh, Mitch Trubisky and the offense 
has been significantly underwhelming. And someone else, I mean, we talked about him earlier. A lot of people believe in Najee Harris, which is why I brought him up in the Mojo segment. But in his career, he has just 3.8 yards per attempt through 20 games. This year, 128 rushing yards and one rushing touchdown. He's never averaged over four yards a carry in a season yet. Obviously, last year uh, did not. Uh, he went for over 1,000 yards, had a bunch of touchdowns because he had a bajillion touches, but his uh, yards per attempt number is uh, relatively low, and he's not as scary at, like, people think, oh, my God, Najee Harris, he was drafted in the first round last year. He's going to run all over this Jets team. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Mixon did it. Uh, Lamar Jackson didn't. I know, I know Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt went wild in the second half of week two, but I, let's not pretend like we're putting Najee Harris in the Joe Mixon category yet. I can at least. I think he's a little bit overrated. He's still got some stuff to prove to me, Najee. Um, but speaking of like the Jets defense and just in general, why I think they should have a chance to keep this one close. Sauce Gardner, DJ Reed, and Michael Carter, specifically the three corners, have been playing Phenomenal. I can't say enough how impressed I've been with the corners. They've been great. No complaints to the corners. Sauce Garner lived up to the hype, lived up to the billing so far. DJ Reed has, you can make the case he's been Joe Douglas's best free agent signing ever. That's how good he's been. And Michael Carter, the second's been a, a really, really good in the slot. Great. Phenomenal. The pass rush. Yes, I know that's a storyline that we have to continue to talk about. And not everyone wants to continue to talk about because it's been beaten to death. But that's what really needs to catch up. We know the limitations at linebacker. We know the limitations at safety, but the corners have been great. It's time for the pass rush outside of Quinnen Williams to come alive. Quinnen had a really good second half in that game last week against the Bengals. He's looked much better overall. Uh, it's time for the Carl Lawson's of the world and, and uh, JFM and uh, Jermaine Johnson and Michael Clemens and like, I know it's the, the rotation is a whole nother. We could probably do a whole 10 minute video on the rotation and why that bothers me. But just in the preview here, yes, the Steelers have good wide receivers. I don't trust the quarterback who's throwing them the ball and the Jets corners have been good. So if the pass rush can get home and they're just okay against the run, like what they've been through so far early in the year through three weeks, you should be fine. The biggest story though, in this preview that we have to get into is Zach Wilson. He is back. What can we expect from Zach Wilson? I'll give you my stat line predictions for him in a second here. But so many people are so concerned about the offensive line. And I get it. The idea of having to start McDermott at left tackle scares the ever-living you-know-what out of me. Uh, but it's not enough for me to deter from playing him. And thank God the Jets came out and said that they are going to start him uh, this week. Because you're just... The more I'll say it for, I don't even know, the millionth time since he's been hurt. I know it's only been a few weeks, but I've probably said it a million times. Once he's healthy and cleared, he has to play. Wasting time with Joe Flacco doesn't do anything. And his mobility should actually help him with a worse offensive line where Joe Flacco was just standing back there and getting crushed every single time he went back to drop back. So, uh, yes, I guess it's a little bit risky, but then, like, what are you going to do? Hold him out another week and then throw him in against the Miami Dolphins who look like an absolute juggernaut who have 10 days to prepare for him because they play on Thursday night this week? Like, there is no soft landing spot. It's the NFL. Get him in there and play him. You have to see what you have, and now this turns into a 14-game sample size. You have 14 games to see what you have in Zach Wilson. You have to play him right away. And yes, the offensive line's a little concerning at left tackle with McDermott likely to play, but it is what it is. You have to play Zach. You can't sit him on the bench. You can't coddle him. You got to put him out there and see what happens. As for my stat predictions, I think Zach Wilson comes back and is okay. I don't think he's phenomenal. I don't think he jumps off the page and is like, whoa, oh my God, what a performance from Zach Wilson. And I also don't think he comes back and stinks. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm not wrong in that department, but I have him at 21 of 32. So not over 40 passing attempts. I think they, you know, reel that in a little bit. Uh, 230 yards, one passing touchdown, one rushing touchdown and an interception, um, which is OK. I think that that would be a pretty OK return. Uh, Brees Hall, I have at 10 carries for 62 yards and I have Elijah Moore getting the receiving touchdown. And I think he goes over 50 yards. I have him at 52 Um I think he'll be focused uh, a more of a focal point in the offense. Um, for whatever reason, Joe Flacco just didn't have a connection with him. He was open and he couldn't find him. Um, and I think Elijah Moore starts to, to come alive a little bit. 
Uh, no Garrett Wilson predictions this week, but I think he continues to, to be good. Uh, I'm not concerned with Zach coming back and then now Garrett's going to go to sleep. I don't think that's the case, uh, but very happy to say that I think Elijah Moore takes that next step forward. Let's get into the picks of the show brought to you by BUSR. BUSR.com slash Matt sign up. That is the official sports book of Matt O'Leary and why they are matching your deposit bonus and giving you 25 casino chips. Absolutely worthwhile to check out. Uh, I was on with Jake Asman last week. If you missed that, we went down some props. We're going to do more collabs uh, thanks to BUSR going forward. But so far, I've absolutely stunk picking games against the spread. I've had much better luck with props, but 0-3 against the spread. Casey is 2-1. and one. We're going to go to her pick in a second, but I'm going to make my pick and do the score prediction. I like the Jets here. I, the spread is at 3.5 at BUSR, and I think the Jets not only cover, but I think they're a live dog. I think they absolutely could win this game, and I'm going to pick them to win this game 20-17. to 17. I don't think it's going to be that high scoring. I think the offense will do just enough, and I think the defense will be fine. I think, again, the, the Steelers' offense really is nothing to write home about with Mitch Trubisky at quarterback, and who knows? Maybe that changes and this breaks the streak because the Jets' defense has been so bad, it feels like, at times, and really hurt this team, but... I think if this is a game, I think they're in it to the end. And you have to, with the rest of the schedule coming up here for in the next little stretch, get to two and two. Don't go down one and three, staring in the face of the Dolphins, the Packers, and, and that stretch run. I get to two and two. It's really not asking a lot. Let's go to Casey. We'll see who she likes. Also on the Jets plus three and a half. All right, we're on the same side this week. Let's see how it works out. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on the game. What you think with Zach Wilson coming back? Score predictions. Do the Jets win? Do they get blown out? Sound off. Get after me on social media at Matt O'Leary and why. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, share it with a friend. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Matt O'Leary. I'll catch you next time.